We're lost in Suncadia. Blakeney's texting and driving, and she doesn't know where she's going. Life of a realtor. <laughs> Hey, where are we going today? We are going to Suncadia. We have a house closing today, so we're gonna go check it out. We're closing today. Today, yep. On your Suncadia sale. And um, we're out here to get keys, to do a quick walkthrough, check check on the house for the sellers. Um, okay, so you've been out how many times since Suncadia in the last month or two? Probably five or six. And how long does it take to get here from Seattle? Only an hour and a half, which is not bad. Hour and a half? Yeah. Okay. So from uh, door to door, you can be in um, a fancy resort in the woods in Clay Elm area, Roslyn area, in 90 minutes. Um, so we're going to show you the house that uh, Blakeney sold to her clients. We're going to walk you around the Sunkedia property as much as we can. And we're going to show you what life is like out here uh, at Sunkedia. And then we're also going to talk about some of the hidden costs of buying and owning at Sunkedia and what it would take for you to own here. Um, because right now, during the COVID pandemic world, it seems like everybody's thinking that way. How can we not necessarily sell and move to a whole new destination or a new location, but have uh, a retreat outside of the city that we can escape to if things get kind of weird in the city. So um, right now, Seattle's at stage two, so things are kind of opening up, but still it's summertime and everybody's looking uh, for a way to get out. And so, Suncadia for some people is that option. So we're gonna show you all around. Stay tuned. Here it is. Blakeney's sale. Oh, you're moving still. Oh, sorry. I was just gonna park here. <laughs> this is adventuring in real estate. <laughs> Cheers to some Katie closing. Cheers, our first one. Happens today. <laughs> Cheers. Some Katie brew. All right, so this is a first for the Greeley group. It is. We have a closing in Suncadia, mm -hmm. but it's definitely not going to be the last because as I talk to people in the Seattle Bellevue region, there's a common thread, which is what are we going to do over the next couple years if our life looks like it has the last few months? One solution is to not sell your house and buy a bigger home with a yard or sell your condo and buy a home with a bigger yard. Keep your in-city house, but also find an out-of-town escape second home, vacation home that you can enjoy yourself. So tell us about this home. Tell us maybe a little bit about what you learned along the way helping these people in some Katie. Yeah, um, the people that I was working with, they've been looking off and on for a couple years and they love the community, just how easy it is. Uh, they currently live in Seattle, so they were looking for that ease of access back and forth um, if they needed to be back in the city in an hour and a half. And it wasn't really until COVID happened that they decided like, hey, we do need that extra space, you know, whether it's for the long term or we just want to get away for a week. And so we came up here, we looked at a few more, and we walked in this one, and, and that was it. They knew right away. And so it kind of worked out that they didn't find anything before that they liked. Yeah. Um, and this is a perfect fit for them. It's a 2017 construction. It's right on the Prospector Golf Course, one of three here in the community, all award-winning. So that's one of the huge selling points for a lot of people here. There's still privacy, but you have neighbors around, so you still feel part of a community. You have that mountain escape without really having to deal with what comes with that. So you have all the services you need here, dining, shops, a spa. It's a luxury community in the woods. 
Exactly. With award-winning golf. So if you're a golfer, it's a no-brainer. But even if you're not, there's so much to do here. We have, there's the two fitness centers, mm -hmm. the spa, as you are mentioning, and then outside of the community, there's hiking, biking, skiing in the winter. It's all nearby. Yeah, exactly. Um, and they also have pools, which are opening up now, which is exciting. So perfect time for summer. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So this home we're sitting in right now is pretty big. How many square feet is it? It's a little bit over 4,000 square feet. 4,000 square feet. So um, really large. You could fit a big family. Um, mm -hmm. You could fit multiple families. But here at Sunkadia, they have a wide variety of different types of properties that people could buy. So if you don't need a large space, in fact, there are homes even bigger than this, right? There are, yeah. Um, this is one of the bigger ones in the just right, like Sunkadia prop proper. It's a record sale for Sunkadia proper. It is. Right? It there is. we go. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> um, outside of here, though, Tumble Creek, that's where you're going to find some with a little bit bigger lot. Um, a lot of new construction, so if you wanted to build something that six plus bedrooms, you could have multiple homes on the property, add in maybe your own pool. That's kind of where people go, a little bit more privacy as well. Um, but you still have all the amenities that St. Katie offers, but then Tumble Creek has their own too. On the opposite end of the spectrum, there are townhomes available. So think of your typical in-city townhome. Mm -hmm. There are rows of those available. There are condos um, where you have a one to two bedroom condo to enjoy, or even in the lodge, I think you can buy um, condos within the big lodge space too, right? I believe so, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's talk a little bit about some of the costs of acquiring a property in Sunkadia. So everybody's fairly aware that when you buy your primary residence, so we work in Seattle and Bellevue, and so if someone were to buy their, their own home in Seattle, most people are kind of generally aware of what that costs. You have your down payment, and you have some closing costs, and maybe that, an HOA fee. Maybe an HOA move-in fee if you're in a condo community. Mm -hmm. But by and large, that's about it. So if you're at a vacation uh, resort property like this, what else can someone expect to pay when they buy a place like Sunkadia, or we have Seabrook out on the coast, and we also have the Lookout in Chelan. All of these are very similar types of properties and how they operate. So what can someone expect when they move into something like this? So Sunkadia, one of the things that brings people to the area is kind of that, that overall resort feel. They know that it's going to be maintained, it's gorgeous. There's a lot of amenities, there's a lot of things that they offer. So what goes into that, it's the community enhancement fee. And that's something that's added on to the purchase of every property. So whether it's a condo or you're buying basically a lodge, which we're called, we're trying to nickname this. The lodge. Yeah, the lodge. <laughs> that community enhancement fee, that's paid at closing, so you don't have to worry about paying that separately. Um, but that is about half a percent of the purchase price. So for a property like this, it was about $10,000. Um, but depending on the sale, it could be, you know, anywhere from a few thousand upwards of even 20,000 or more. Um, but that goes to maintain the overall kind of appeal of Sankadia. And that's just a one-time fee, so you don't have to pay that again. Um, but that's something that the new buyer is responsible for each time that the home is sold. In addition to that, there are also HOA dues. Um, that's a monthly fee that the homeowner pays. And for this, it was only around 175. So not as much actually as we see back in Seattle for townhomes, condos, which can be close to a thousand, even more than that. You have the option of purchasing packages. So to use the amenities that Sankadia offers, there's the golf package and what's called the sports package. The golf package is great if you're an avid golfer. It's a one-time initiation fee, and then you have a monthly due on top of your other HOA due too. Pull back the curtain a little bit. If mm -hmm. you're an avid golfer and you want to buy the golf package, you get a discount in the first 30 days. You do. After closing. so. What's the full amount for the golf package? And then if you're an owner in your first month, what's the discount that people can expect right around now in 2020? Uh, the golf package was about 14,000, but if you purchase that within 30 days of closing, then it's about a 50% discount. So I want to say around seven or 8,000. Um, we didn't look too closely into that one. My clients, they like golfing, not enough to purchase a package, but one of the other perks that they can take advantage of is just doing the drop-in fee, the greens fee, and that's a 20% discount for owners. So if you don't get the golf package mm -hmm. up front, uh, you could always buy it at an increased rate later. You could. But um, 
Uh, set that aside for a second. If you want to golf occasionally, you get reduced green fees mm -hmm. as, a, as an owner, as a member here at Sunpedia. Yeah. Okay, so if you don't want to golf, if you're terrible at golfing, you get a sports package. How much oh, that team! Goes? Go on! That was about seven to 8000 That is the one that kind of includes the rest of the activities here. So if you want to use the pools, fitness facilities, those they don't offer drop-ins, so you would need to buy that package. Um, since you're going to be doing that within 30 days of closing, it drops down to about... 3400 give or take. Give or take, yeah. So for the life of your ownership here, you don't have to pay that again, but you do have an increase to your monthly dues. Correct. As a member of the, the sports the, package club. Yes. Okay. So in addition to the HOA dues, it's going to be about 130 a month for that sports package. So once you add in some of these packages, your dues go up to three to four hundred dollars, roughly, give or take, yeah. depending on what it is you're buying into. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. And so, anything else that we should be aware of, fees-wise? Fees-wise. Hope not. A lot of Costco <laughs> runs to stock your <laughs> wine cabinet, I think. Here. <laughs> yeah. Um, there are restaurants on site you can spend money and eat at, mm -hmm. and. Um, what you can expect your homeowner's dues to go towards. I mean, this is a very well-run, well-put-together community with infrastructure. There's roads, there's mm -hmm. um, landscaping going on. Um, they plow the roads and the driveways when it snows. They, they have community events, so there's inner tubing in the wintertime, there's ice skating in the wintertime. There's summer concerts in their parks. They have activities in the fall, like pumpkin patch and just other neat kind of activities for not just kids, but families too. I mean, adults yeah. too. <laughs> so by and large, the fees that you're paying on a monthly basis, mm -hmm. your dues, your homeowners association mm -hmm. dues, um, are supporting a lot of that infrastructure and activity that takes place here. Yeah. Which is kind of why people want to buy here. There's so much to do, a lot of activities that are preset and organized for you. And there's lots of golf and lots of swimming pools. Now, one thing to think about, Sunkadia is really close to Roslyn, mm -hmm. really close to Cleolum. And there are tons of areas where you could find a cabin home in the woods, uh, up in the mountainside, on a lake, Lake Cleolum is yep. an option too. So if you're looking for a vacation destination or a second home, you don't have to spend all of that extra money to be in Sincadia. Right. However, things people don't think about when you're buying a mountain home would mm -hmm. be what? Road maintenance, um, just plowing in the winter. There were a few places we looked at beforehand, gorgeous properties, killer views, but there was no way that they would be able to get up and down that driveway in the winter. They'd have to buy a, some kind of snowmobile, Polaris, <laughs> anything um, that sounded fun, but not on a regular basis hauling groceries up that way. Right. Um, the other thing that they thought about was that in Sancadia, it's on sewer and outside of Sancadia, it's a septic system and also well water. And unless that's something that you're used to, it's quite a bit of uh, a new way of life, if you want to put it that way. Exactly. So when people want to get out of town, most of the time, you want sort of a turnkey operation. You don't have to think too much. You can just pack your weekend bag and show up and use the home. Whereas if you're out in some of those outlying areas, you might have to factor in getting your road plowed yeah. or tree removed, you know, off your driveway that fell when you were gone or get your septic pumped and you weren't expecting it. So there's lots of things. There's more maintenance involved in something that's outside of a community like this. Whereas here in Sankadia, we have relatively brand new homes that has all of the infrastructure and convenience of being in the city. But you're in the woods. So we're going to show you a little bit around this home and then take a look at some other homes in Suncadia that are at different price points. But for now, this is a record sale in Suncadia, so we're going to toast and cheers. Congratulations. Congrats. And hopefully her clients will let me come stay and bring my wild kids. Probably not, but hopefully. We'll see. <laughs> we're lost in Suncadia. It's ugly. texting and driving, and she doesn't know where she's going. Life of a realtor. <laughs> All right, we are going to check out a couple homes here at Suncadia. Give you a little sense for the inventory available and what Suncadia has to offer, especially for the active inventory. Blakeney's our resident expert here. Soon to be. <laughs> so we'll share, share what we're looking at, share what we're walking through, and see what we can see here. All right, so this is a small little detached townhome. Come on, let's take a look. All right, 
this is 333 Sweet Shop. Let's go take a look upstairs. What's this called? Bunk area for the kids there. And a second master or second larger bedroom. We're gonna go look at a couple more. This is newer, so it looks cute and looks a little less worn, but maybe just a little smaller. There's that guy we should... He doesn't know his swing's being filmed. He's, that's not Tiger Woods, but he looks good. Have a nice view down that way. So I have three kids, and this would be their like dream scenario for bedtime. Realtor fail. All right, we came, we saw Suncadia, and now 90 minutes on I-90 back to Seattle. Any parting words for um, anyone considering Suncadia? If you're considering Suncadia, let us know. She's your gal. <laughs> um, Honestly, my favorite part about Suncadia, I've, the pools are awesome, the homes are cool, and it's fun to get out of the city and be in the woods, but I just love how you can have a retreat 90 minutes from downtown Seattle. So hopefully that holds true on our ride home. I just convinced Blake to listen to Billy Strings, so um, hopefully it won't be too unbearable for her. Okay, catch you on the next video.